Hello, it's Scott Manley here with uh, the third part of my tutorial on building aircraft. Now, uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, jet engines and about how to actually build a space plane, a step-by-step -step version. Now, as you know, uh, we've been using the Aerospike in, previous, in the previous video. Now, uh, Aerospike is an engine which requires, as you can see, liquid fuel and oxidizer. And if you look at the fuel tanks, they contain liquid fuel and oxidizer. Well, the jet engines, there's one here, the basic jet engine, it requires liquid fuel and intake air. Now, that means that you can take liquid fuel from any of these fuel tanks, right? If you take a look at regular fuel tank, it has liquid fuel in it, but it also has oxidizer. Well, it doesn't need to carry the oxidizer because the oxidizer will come from air intakes. Now, there are a few different tanks here. There's a, a flared version that goes from a size 1 to size 2. There's the fuselage. There's the Mark 1 fuselage. And for most people, the Mark 1 fuselage is the obvious place to start if I can make this thing disappear. Uh, however, if I just mouse over these, you will see that the Mark 1 fuselage has a total mass of 1.1 and contains 150 units of fuel, whereas the Mark 2 fuselage contains 160 and masses approximately 1 tonne. The Mark 2 is by far a more efficient fuel tank to have around, so I'm just going to plug one of these in here. It does, however, make it look but ugly. Anyway, we'll go back to page one and we will fit ourselves with a basic jet engine. Now, that is a fuel requirement satisfied. To get the air requirement, we need to go to aerodynamics and use one of the intakes. Now, the easiest one is the radial air intake. These are things that can be surface attached more or less anywhere. Uh, obviously, you want to add them in pairs or you want to add a single one. Let's good idea or uh, one way that works I guess is to just stick it as a single air intake on the bottom and actually try to make it straight because having an asymmetric air intake is probably not the greatest thing. So from there let's actually build out an aircraft using all the tricks we've known before so we need to have wings, delta wings, we need a pair of those and we need them far enough back that they're not going to affect the uh, far enough back that they're going to be behind the center of mass and I'm going to use canards on this because canards make it slightly easier to get off the runway although they also make it slightly easier to make your thing flip out of control when you you run low on fuel. There we go that is uh, not looking terrible actually it is looking terrible but it'll be enough for us so we'll put a pair of these on the back so we have some lateral control and then we're on to the undercarriage. We'll use standard tricycle landing gear here, a pair at the back. Uh, and these are splayed out a little. We don't need to splay them quite so much. Uh, people, Some people think that uh, having splayed landing gear makes the aircraft less stable and that is actually true because of the way forces are applied. However, it is possible to get away with it. It's just a you couldn't get away with it in real life. Uh, real life landing gear, if they deployed like that, would have their wheels perpendicular to the surface. But we don't need to do that because this is a game and the mechanics aren't quite the same. So how does this thing fly? Well, let's. Uh, well, we press space to fire up the jet engine, throttle up, and uh, we'll see how it works. Now uh, let's take a look at a few things. First of all, it intake there. It actually tell you can right click on it to get information. There we go. Takes off beautifully, huh? So yeah, you can see the the flow and the drag. Basically, all of the intakes generate intake air. It goes into a common pool, which is then consumed by the various engines around the aircraft. And uh, drag is generated when the uh, air intake is open. So. Early on in the flight, you may even have fewer air intakes open so that you can reduce the drag because lower in the atmosphere, you generate more air. Also, uh, the jet engine here, you see the specific impulse is changing with altitude. I'm going up and it gets higher and now it starts to get lower. The jet engines, there are two jet engines in the game, are tuned to fly at specific altitude ranges. If you're flying low level aircraft, you want a basic jet engine because they are optimized for low altitude operation. If you want to go anything higher you want to have the turbojet. So most space planes will in fact use turbojet engines. 
Now, uh, if I another thing to notice, if I close the intake here, uh, it'll tell us if I right click on the engine, we are intake air deprived. And if I look at my resources and I throttle up, you'll see that I'm actually using. I will continue to use fuel, uh, even although I'm not actually burning it in the engine. So if I open the intake again, I will start my engine and I will continue to fly again. Uh, this is important because when you're flying a spacecraft into space, at some point when these engines die, you will, uh, or at some point you're going to run out of air. And uh, that will mean your engine will lose thrust. And at that point, it's a good idea to close down all your intakes so that you're not producing the same amount of drag. Anyway, we're going to now take a look at how to build a space plane with these things. Okay, using everything we have learned, we're going to try and build a space plane. I'm going to start with the Mark II cockpit this time. Now, the Mark II cockpit doesn't have an interior view, but hey, it has this nice place on the front where I can attach a RAM air intake. And we all know that the RAM air intake is by far the best air intake. Uh, you should use it everywhere. You should try and avoid looking at anything else except perhaps the radial intake. We're going to use a single tank of jet fuel and that is going to feed into a single turbojet engine. If you're building a space plane, you almost certainly want turbojets for almost every stage because the regular jet engines are really not capable of providing the thrust at the high altitudes. So uh, to get to the high altitude, once we get to the high altitudes, we're going to power up some rockets. And that means a couple of regular rocket fuel tanks a pair of Rockamax engines and uh, these space uh, for this space we should probably put on more air intakes because there's no limit to how many air intakes you can have for each engine. Problem is actually putting them on there doesn't want to work. So uh, you can either space things out using wing surfaces or you can just use uh, some cubic octagonal struts here. That's what I'm going to do. I'm trying to keep the fuel tanks more or less in line so the balance doesn't move a great deal. It will move a little because this turbojet is heavier than anything on this end, but hopefully it shouldn't be so catastrophic that I lose control of my aircraft when I run low in fuel. Okay, so here's that ram air intake. Now we have three ram air intakes. We're probably, it's probably worth adding some uh, struts here to make sure that my aircraft does not wobble a great deal. Uh, speaking of wobble, let's start adding the aerodynamics to control this thing. So, little uh, Delta Deluxe winglets on the back here. That'll, well, these should look pretty darn nice, I guess. I, I don't know, I'm not 100% convinced. Uh, we're now going to add Delta wings here. And we do want to put them, well, we want to make sure they're far enough back that we don't lose stability. That's always the, the key here. So... That should work. However, I want to put canards at the front, or rather these little winglets. Oh, that's kind of nice. It makes like a nice V shape there. Um, I might move these back just as far as I can go. There we go. Okay. That's good. And just for extra measure to improve our stability, if we put control surfaces here, then it means that this will uh, also... Uh, this will also move the, the center of lift back so I can then afford to shift it forwards and make a rather more pleasing line for the whole thing. Hopefully this should actually work. And also, from uh, what we've learned, it's nice to have a little upwards uh, slope on those big wings to help stabilize the aircraft. That should work. And uh, for the last piece of construction material, the last bits of construction we're going to do is going to be the wheel bays and the wheel bays we can more or less stick off on the outside there and then we can stick a single one under the nose here making sure that everything is all lined up and straight that's looking pretty good that should get us off the ground and hopefully land somewhere safely now to actually make this launch we're going to have to mess around with action groups so uh, i in this case i'm going to assign action group one to the turbo jets uh no actually that's a stage button action group one will assign to the turbo jets. Action group two will enable the rocket max engines and reaction group three will toggle the air intakes. Now the, the air intakes start on, that's fine, but once we get up to an altitude, we probably wanna... Okay, so here we are with a standard space plane uh, operating procedures or whatever. 
we're gonna try and go into space. Now in this case, I'm not gonna disable the uh, disable the torque on the crew capsule because we will in fact need that once we get uh, once we lose aerodynamic efficiency. And uh, I'm more or less yeah. Now we've got it. We're off the runway. Stow the gear. We're probably gonna pull into a 45 degree climb. Uh, which would be great until we get to about 10 kilometers, 15 kilometers, then we will flatten out our climb and at that point we will try and gain horizontal velocity rather than vertical velocity. I'm going to click on the resources chart so you can see what's going on. Very important to actually pay attention to this. So the intake air you see starts out at 0 0.60. Once that reaches about 0.01, your jets will cut out and you're going to need to be on rockets by that point. Switching over to rockets, that is a judgment call, but you want to be going as fast as possible. You want to do as much as you can using the aircraft because this fuel is so much more efficient than this fuel. In fact, it's very unlikely I'm going to turn off all this fuel before I get into space. Okay, so we're above 10 kilometers now. What I'm going to do it's flatten out my trajectory just a little. Now, the amount of intake or air that you're getting from an intake depends on a bunch of parameters. It, it depends upon the size, the cross section of the air intake, but it also depends upon how much fuel uh, air is hitting it, and that in turn depends on velocity. So, there's an interesting relationship is that as you go up higher, you can still feed the engine if you continue to travel fast enough. So you want to kind of balance these things out. You want to try and get as fast as possible, but you also want to burn through your fuel. Uh, and you know the the question of where that judgment is is uh, actually quite complicated. But uh, you'll also notice that uh, if you right click on this, our specific impulse is now about fourteen hundred. It's a uh, better, I think. It's better than most engines, except the basic jet engine at ground level. But uh, it is, however, providing a fairly significant amount of thrust. In fact, the thrust is continuing to increase. We're just about to pass 200 kilonewtons in a few minutes. That's because thrust is related to altitude. There we go there. Now, our intake air is down to 0.22. I'm just going to flatten this trajectory out a little more. We want to very carefully tease ourselves up. We don't want to go too high too fast because... As soon as we go too high, we have to uh, switch off our engines and we have to start using the jet en the, the rocket engines. And the rocket engines only have a limited amount of fuel. And uh, I guess we're going to actually hopefully burn a lot of this stuff off. But there we're, we're getting up. You see now above uh, 90 kilometers, I'm traveling up around 30 meters per second. Our surface velocity is... 1070 meters per second that's almost halfway to orbital velocity and that is just using less than uh, less than half of the fuel in this jet in fact less than one third of the jet fuel on board there we go picking up a lot of uh, re-entry effects here that's basically what happens because you're traveling fast and slow and fast and low now I'm trying to tease the nose down a little more we want to watch this air intake. We, once it gets too low, we want to turn on the rocket engines and we want to help those carry us beyond the capabilities of the plain old jet engine. Okay, so I'm going to keep pinching the nose down just a little to make sure that we uh, continue to gain horizontal speed. Um, we, you see our intake air is starting to get rather low. Ideally, we want to burn through as much of this as possible, but given that I'm going to have to publish this video at some point, there is a limit to what I can do there. Now, as soon as we start getting into the threshold where these this engine is about to give up the ghost, that's probably when you press 2 to fire up these engines, and those will provide extra thrust and therefore extra velocity. Uh, we will then have to start to pitch upwards, hopefully getting... Uh, getting up high before our fuel uh, well hopefully we'll start getting some vertical velocity before this engine runs out of oxygen completely uh, but the longer you can burn on this engine the the more fuel you're going to carry into orbit it's okay to even try and fly level for a little while as well 
So here's me dropping the nose down just a touch in the hope that uh, we continue to gain... I uh, hope, hope that we will stay low enough to get uh, extra velocity from this engine for as long as possible. See our thrust is dropping off incidentally as well. The thrust will eventually uh, reach zero. Anyway, I'm going to press 2 to fire these engines and this will immediately start giving us a little extra thrust and speed. Uh, I'm going to pitch up a little now. Not too hard. Oh, and there you see this engine. It says intake air deprived. If I throttle down just a touch... Uh, there, we actually got our jet engine back. That's going to help us for a little while longer. Uh, but obviously we've had to back off our thrust, and we're having to back off the thrust of every engine. But that's not a problem, we're just going to keep uh, taking advantage of the thrust. The extra thrust that this thing gives us, and at this point I think we're just going to throttle up. It says intake air deprived, so what I can do is press 3 now to close the intake air. I'm going to keep this engine running for a little while because uh, I want to reduce the mass in this middle tank here. Uh, we're continuing to gain velocity, we're now fighting against the, the atmosphere a little. But uh, obviously if you do this with Sferum Aerospace you will get better performance because the atmosphere grows thinner more quickly or it is a little more slippery let's say. There we go. Uh, continuing to burn upwards, our vertical speed is starting is climbing quite a lot. Let's take a look at the map and see what it says. We're going to peek out at 40 kilometers, but we want to go higher than that. So we're just going to hold this position. And uh, at this point, I think I'm going to press 1 to turn off this engine completely. So that we're not going to burn the rest of the fuel in this tank. We can actually use it for landing. So now we've performed our atmospheric entry using the jet engines. We're more or less on a ballistic trajectory. And uh, it'll be a case of circularizing the orbit using the regular engines. At this point, it basically becomes a regular spacecraft, albeit one which has a lot of extra mass because of all the air breathing equipment that is attached to it. Anyway, I hope you found this series of tutorials interesting. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.